Hello, <coughs> welcome back to my lectures. Uh, in this lecture, we will be discussing about logic styles for uh, low power consumption. The first one is very basic static C mass logic. In this static C mass logic, there will be a pull up and pull down. Pull up is always made of P uh, mass logic and uh, uh, pull down is always an N mass logic. <coughs> In n mass logic, uh, if a connection is in series, uh, that will be reverse. Uh, uh, it should be parallel in p mass logic. That is how uh, we realize the uh, given function in uh, c mass. The advantages of uh, static c mass logic is it is easy to fabricate, and uh, there are so many uh, synthesis uh, tools that will uh, automatically realize the given function in c mass. So those are the two advantages. <coughs> the third is, uh, advantage is its noise margin is very large. Very good noise margin uh, is offered by this uh, C static C mass logic. <coughs> and another uh, important uh, advantage is good robustness property against voltage scaling and transistor sizing. Even though you scale down the voltages, like uh, if the supply voltage is uh, 12 volts, the same circuit can be used for supply voltages of 5 volts. Uh, that is called as voltage scaling. The voltage scaling is also, it supports and it supports transistor sizing also. Because we always write in terms of W by L ratios, whatever the W by L ratio that you, you need to choose for your circuit is applicable for this uh, circuit. And its uh, switching activity is less compared to the other logics. Uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, we need not to put any uh, swing restoration circuits. Swing restoration circuits means uh, whenever uh, it swings from uh, 0 to 5 volts or 5 to 0 volts, uh, um, some circuits will not produce good 1 and or good 0. In such uh, cases, we need to have uh, swing restoration circuits. That is not required in this case. And charge sharing problem is also not there in uh, CMOS because uh, one network, if pull up network is off, then only pull down network will be on and vice versa. So there won't be any charge sharing issues arising. The disadvantage, definitely every circuit will have its uh, uh, pros and cons and its uh, disadvantage uh, in this case is large number of transistors. This means, for example, to realize a particular function, you need to have 8 n mass transistors then uh, uh, for this static c mass you, you need to have 8 n mass and 8 p mass transistors that is 16 transistors so larger number of transistors are required hence large chip area large delay and large power consumption uh, chip uh, uh, expansion uh, if the number of functions that are to be included in the chip may not be supported in some cases so these are the, this is a major disadvantage and <clears throat> the other uh, serious concern about CMOS logic is it is its short circuit power dissipation. Short, uh, short circuit power dissipation is uh, uh, when, the when the input voltage is tran uh, taking transition from 0 to 1 at a particular point of time both pull up and pull down networks both will be on that uh, during that time there is a short circuit directly from supply to the ground it, in in that short very short duration a large power consumption takes place that is called as short circuit power dissipation that is one problem another problem is as the devices are very tiny uh, we all uh, can easily predict and understand that a device which is very small cannot handle large currents so, uh, because uh, we construct this CMOS uh, uh, function, CMOS logic using PMOS and NMOS devices, both are very tiny. Its output driving capability is very less. Output driving capability means the ability to supply the required current to the next level is called as output driving capability that output driving capability is very less in this CMOS case. Uh, to overcome such uh, problems, 
we have to go for this dynamic CMOS logic. In this dynamic CMOS logic, you can see here only n block, uh, n logic block will, will only be there. Uh, we will remove the pull-up network, which is made of, uh, which was made of uh, PMOS logic in the earlier case, with equal number of transistors in the other, uh, in the pull-down network. We have replaced that with a PMOS device at the top and NMOS device at the bottom. Both are supplied with a phase. That means, <coughs> consider a clock which is given to both the transistors at the same time. When the clock is high, pull down device will be on and pull up device will be off. When the clock becomes low, uh, this will be uh, on and this will be off. At any point of time, if you can consider, uh, there won't be any short circuit between drain and uh, source. That is how uh, power consumption, static power consumption can be removed using this dynamic CMOS logic and functionality can be implemented using n mass logic. So, even phase is, this I have explained you. This also I have explained you. Advantages of dynamic logic. It combines, uh, it combines the advantages of low power static CMOS and the low chip area of pseudo NMOS. Both uh, advantages are here. The number of transistors is uh, the number of transistors is uh, substantially lower, lower compared to the CMOS because in CMOS, for example, uh, in our example, eight NMOS transistors are there. There should be eight PMOS devices. Both 8 plus 8 is 16 to n. Here in this case, along with the number of n mass transistors, just need plus 2 transistors. Plus 2, n plus 2. That means 8 plus 2, 10. In the previous case, it is 16. So, large number of decrease, a large decrease in the number of transistor requirement. As the number of transistors are less, it consumes less power. It occupies less space, its cost will be lower, its dynamic power dissipation will also be less. So, no uh, spurious transitions and no glitching power is taking place in this case. The disadvantage of this dynamic CMOS logic is higher switching activity because the up and down networks both have to switch at a very rapid speed irrespective of what is happening sorry irrespective of uh, these two circuits will switch very fast irrespective of what is happening in this circuit so large switching activity may involve large power consumption and it is not as robust as static CMOS because only two uh, devices are there, steering networks are there. Uh, so there is a possibility of instability. Clock, clock skew problem may also be there. And it suffers from charge sharing problem because only N mass logic uh, will be there um, to implement the logic functions. And charge leakage problem uh, and, and there won't be uh, there are not much uh, robust uh, synthesis tools scad tools available for this for the development of this dynamic CMOS logic so these are the limitations or drawbacks of the um, dynamic logic to overcome that clock skew problem we have to go for di domino logic where in the domino logic, uh, you can see here, uh, directly the clock frequency will be given to a, a PMOS network at the uh, top side and NMOS similarly uh, at the bottom. And whatever that we do for this dynamic CMOS logic, we will be doing. And only the only difference in this uh, domino logic is, we will be taking the output through an inverter. So that is domino logic.
uh, or we can use norasimhas or uh, in short it may be called as nores in norasimhas what we will be doing we will be uh, implementing the circuit using the dynamic simhas logic and the output is given to the uh, next block where next block is made of p p mass logic as it is p mass logic the clock which is used in the previous case will be inverted and given to this next stage similarly the inverted clock again is given to the next stage and again uh, the output is taken from this uh, n n pull down network and given as the input to the next block this is how no race or no ma no racimas logic is used to overcome uh, all those issues arised by this various techniques so these are the various uh, different kinds of uh, mass logics which will uh, help you to save your power or low power designs okay thank you